All right, so uh, just to kind of wrap up our look at raster analysis, I'm just going to show you some examples of digital terrain analysis that you can do using a digital elevation model um, inside of QGIS. There's actually lots of options. Um, this is actually one of the go-to tools for doing digital terrain analysis. And part of the reason for that is because Saga specifically has a lot of terrain analysis tools. All right, so here I have an elevation surface. This is a DEM derived from LiDAR, so it's pretty... Uh, decent high resolution data set. Um, let's look at the properties here. Uh, let's see, uh, information for the raster. So uh, we've got our projection information, location, the units, the number of rows and columns, the bit type uh, or data type format. Um, should have a cell size. I thought I did. Here's band statistics. Um, Oh yeah, five by uh, five uh, meter. Note that it could be better than that. I it just coarsened it a bit so that it doesn't take forever to run. Okay, so um, there are some analyses built directly into QGIS for terrain analysis. So, for example, if we go to analysis, we have like a hill shaded option. So this allows you to generate a hill shade. So. It's pretty similar to how you would do it in, in ARC, if you're familiar with that. So give it a DEM. Um, do you can set a Z factor if the vertical and horizontal units are different. They're not in this case, so let's leave it at one. Uh, we can do an exaggeration if we want. Um, here you're setting the position of the illuminating source of the sun. So this is the compass direction. Uh, it's just like a kind of northwestern position. And this is the altitude, so 45 degrees off the horizon. Um, and there's some other options there. You can do multi-directional shading um, with multiple sun directions. Uh, we'll just leave that set for now, and we'll run that. Okay, and then close. Okay, there we go. So there's a hill shade um, just with the default settings. As you can see, it's pretty detailed. And again, this isn't even at full resolution. So you can see some like road networks, some um, fluvial patterns there. Um, and yeah, so that's that's an example of doing a hill shade. Um, some other options just natively um, in QGIS, um, we have slope. So uh, again, we'd want to input our elevation surface. This ratio of vertical units to horizontal, again, if the units are different, but they're not in this case. Um, if you click this, it'll give you percent slope instead of degree slope. Um, yeah, so let's hit run. Make that surface. Close. Okay, so there we have a topographic slope surface. We, uh, let me do a symbology here real quick just to change out the look of it. So, so red would be steeper, right? Um, here is an example for topographic aspect or compass direction. So we'll feed it the DEM. And you have trigonometric angle instead of azimuth. Um, we'll leave it at azimuth or compass direction. Zero, return zero for flat instead of null. I'm going to turn that on. And that's all we should need to do with that. All right, so there we got our compass directions, basically zero to 359, right? So your direction of slope. All right, so those are some of your like basic analyses. Um, let's look at some more complex ones that are specific to Saga. So I'm gonna clear out my search here and I go into Saga and there should be a whole set of terrain analysis tools. So we have one for channels, hydrology, lighting, morphometry, which is like shape, uh, profiling. Um, let's look at some of the morphology options. Okay, and so you, again, you can see a bunch of different tools here. So um, uh, terrain index, convergence index, uh, landform classifications. Uh, what uh, One that I like a lot, um, which I think is pretty informative, is these... Um, I believe it's morphometric features. Let's have a look at that. Um, yeah, here we go. So this one, you can input a um, surface. 
and then this is the search radius because it's these a lot of these calculations are based on a moving window I'm just gonna step this up to 11 um, and then there's some tolerance settings we only need to mess with this and it's gonna generate now a bunch of output so we're gonna get um, generalized surface, slope, aspect, profile curvature, planned curvature, longitudinal, cross-sectional, max, minimum. So in short, you get a lot of these like curvature measurements. Um, so I'm gonna run that real quick. And again, this runs through Saga, so again, it'll look a little bit different. Um, all right, and we'll hit close there. And now we have ourselves some surfaces, so uh, just look at the area of profile curvature, uh, generalize uh, elevation. One thing to note here, note that the output's a little bit smaller in terms of number of cells or extent than the input, and that's because it doesn't have full set of neighbors on the edges, so it has to like truncate the data a bit. Um, there's topographic slope again, aspect. This is, again, different measures of curvature, min, that one's odd looking. Um, maximum morphometric features, cross-sectional. So anyway, we've got a lot of different surfaces there. Um, let's look at a few others. This uh, terrain surface texture is like a measure of like surface roughness. Um, actually, let's do this one as terrain roughness index. So this one will feed it again our slope surface or sorry, our elevation surface. Again, we want to search radius, so set it to 11. Uh, you can apply distance weighting, we'll just leave it. Um, distance weighting, well, well, we'll use no distance weighting for now. And then we'll hit run. All right, so now we have out a, a topographic ruggedness index here. It's basically a measure of like topographic variability. And again, there's lots of other options. We don't need to go through all of these, obviously. But I um, mean, you know, if you do like some landform type analyses, you're a geomorphologist or doing like some type of modeling that might incorporate terrain variables, this is a good place to look. Um, I guess just to finish up, let's do this um, topographic position index. This is a pretty common one. So I'm going to, again, provide it the DM, and we'll let it run with its defaults there. Uh -oh. Distance, oh yeah, uh, no distance waiting. And we'll let it run that. All right, so now we got our topographic position index here. Again, this is... Um, basically like differentiating like ridge versus valley or like like hilltops versus uh, valley bottoms. Um, so that's just another example. Hey, right, to finish this off, we're gonna look at just like some symbology. Um, so I'm gonna turn off everything and just go back to our hill shade and our DEM here. So uh, let's play around with the symbology here to just make like a nice looking terrain. Um, terrain surface. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this LiDAR layer, or the, the DEM layer, and I'm going to adjust the transparency a bit. So I'll make it, I don't know, like, I'll do like 60% transparent. And then we'll change out the uh, the collar ramp. Get here to symbology, and from single band gray, we're going to change that to single band pseudo collar. And then maybe we'll pick a ramp that makes sense. The tans generally work. These work pretty good for this, I think. Okay. Um, so what we have going on here is we've got our collars representing elevation and then underneath of that we've got a hill shade um, which is providing the texture so it brings a nice like you know train um, 
textural model um, for, makes like a good base map.